When I started on my proposal, I was trying to think about something that related to ideas about computer science without being too closely tied to computer science. So I, I started thinking about ways in which ideas about computer science relate to ideas about patterning, to ideas about color, to ideas about decoration even. So that's really the direction I wanted to go. So the title is Bring Me the Sunset in a Cup, and that is from a poem uh, by Emily Dickinson. I feel like there, there is a strong connection, and I feel that it, it makes more sense to have a slightly open-ended title like that rather than a descriptive title. So it's a way to sort of take the work and expand it beyond its meaning as simple tessellation and expand it into the world. The system that I used is two parts. One is a pattern uh, which is based on domino patterns developed by the mathematician Hao Wang in the 1970s. And these are domino patterns where they match colors on four-sided dominoes which are can be used to describe certain computational possibilities. That is what informs the kind of tiling, the tessellation of the patterns. And one side is the three domino problem from Wang, and on the other side is a 10 domino problem from Wang. So it's two different tessellation problems presented. The colors that I worked with are a different approach to thinking about well, a more modern idea about computer science and more connected to machine learning and AI. And that is really the, this subtlety of these in-between colors. So there is uh, yellowish green, greenish blue, bluish violet, violetish red, reddish orange, and orangish yellow. So those are the colors that I used to create the patterning in the tiles. The color choices were difficult. It took a long time. It took a long time for a number of reasons, and um, we needed to find a paint that worked on this material. We kind of reinvented the material using uh, automotive paint on stainless steel discs, and trying to find paint that is matte, because I didn't want it to be sparkly. I wanted it to be matte, so that is really purely about color and not about reflection. That took time, and then also to find groups of colors that worked well together. So it's, it's six color combinations, six in-between colors, and they all have to have the same kind of intensity. There's a bit of a different balance between them, but the, um, the intensity, I wanted to be consistent. So there was an overall feeling of evenness to the work. I'm interested in the work appearing different in different light conditions, from different angles, from different distances. Also, the color is on these small disks that are attached by pins, and so they actually move. So the whole image is three-dimensional. It comes out from the surface, and it, and it changes, and it reflects light differently depending on the angle of, of the disks. So it's something that is connected in, in some ways to ideas about optics, uh, ideas about perception, but also, for me, very strongly connected to uh, the history of painting and especially 19th century painting and Impressionism. And this idea of seeing something up close that looks quite different uh, from far away. And how uh, when you look at an Impressionist or particularly a Pointillist painting, you see these dabs of color. And as you step further back, the image comes into focus. So the edges, which are not so rectilinear, they're staggered by the positioning of the panels, by the tiles, is really to suggest the idea that this tessellation can continue forever. I mean, that's part of what Wang is talking about in terms of this, these repeating um, tessellations. So to give a sense of it continuing on, I decided to not have a sort of hard, straight edge, but to have these sort of triangular tile shapes that continue out in all directions. So this continues out as a tessellation in infinitely. There are a lot of angles in the building when you come in, and I think that the, the angles on the edge of the artwork pick up and play off the angles of the, of the architecture as well. I mean, it does, of course, exist in this very specific architectural space, 
and I spent a lot of time thinking about that and discussing it with the architects and trying to figure out a solution that makes the art look good and also makes the architecture look good. I'm hoping that the work reveals itself slowly to people as they spend more time with it. So as students move through during the course of the semester, maybe they'll see different things and maybe try to find some connections to what they're thinking about in their own work or their own lives.